Hi, it's Katrina. From creepy skulls to weird artifacts left by a forgotten city, here are 10 of the most mysterious archaeological finds that scientists can't explain. Number 10. Humanoid Skull In 2007, Danish contractors replacing old sewage pipes on Sealand Island discovered a bizarre human-like skull with huge eye sockets and fangs. The Principality of Sealand is already a strange and controversial place to begin with. It consists of an abandoned World War II fortress in the North Sea called Rough Tower, where an estimated 27 residents live. They claim that the structure constitutes an independent sovereign state, but have failed to establish it as an official nation-state or gain recognition as such. Workers allegedly found the strange skull underneath a building that once belonged to a butcher while removing century-old pipes. Experts at a veterinary college in Copenhagen could not link it to any known species on Earth, and subsequent carbon dating at the University of Copenhagen's Niels Bohr Institute estimated its age at around 800 years old. Neolithic artifacts, including animal bones, stone axes, and equipment were also found at the site, but could not be linked to the skull, which some speculate belonged to a human-alien hybrid. There is a long-standing rumor among conspiracy theorists that Sealand once served as a meeting place for members of a secret society of writers called the Order of Pegasus Light, which they claim was formed during the 1300s. Many, if not most, believe that the skull, which remains shrouded in mystery to this day, is simply a hoax. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Number 9. The Works of the Old Men There are more and more large, ancient, geometric stone structures coming to light every year. These stone geoglyphs can be found spread throughout Syria, Saudi Arabia, and Jordan, occupying an even bigger area than the famed Nazca Lines of Peru. They depict various designs of different sizes, including kites and wheel-like shapes. From the ground, they are almost impossible to identify, but from the air, they are clear for the eye to see. The local Bedouins call the stone structures the works of the old men, but very little else is known about their origins since they are so old. Who built them and why? Most are estimated to be somewhere between 3,000 and 4,000 years old, but other archaeologists have found two wheel-shaped patterns that date back some 8,500 years, also making them older than the Nazca Lines in Peru, which are estimated to be around 2,000 years old. Most people didn't know anything about them until they were witnessed from the sky in 1927 by British Royal Air Force Flight Lieutenant Percy Maitland as he flew over a lava field in Jordan. Some of the geoglyphs look like spoked wheels, while others are simply circular and others look like kites. Most believe that they had astrological or seasonal significance to their creators. Some of the wheel-shaped structures align with the winter solstice, but others don't seem to coincide with anything at all. The kite-shaped structures were possibly used for hunting, with a structure that could have been used to funnel animals into an enclosed area, making it difficult for them to escape before becoming the next meal. Another possibility is that the kites were used to prevent camels from straying. No excavation has been performed on the works of the old men yet, but doing so would probably provide further clues about where they came from. Number 8. Fisher Canyon Footprint In 1917, a miner from the Nevada Mining Company claimed to find a 200-million-year-old shoe print. Otherwise known as an out-of-place artifact, the miner claimed that he saw a fossil in some loose rocks and that it was actually a shoe heel imprint stuck in limestone from the Triassic period. An out-of-place artifact is an object that does not seem to belong where it's found or when it dates back to. Now known as the Fisher Canyon footprint, this artifact is a fossilized piece of limestone that appears to contain a shoe print. Hmm, what do you think? There are three different stories about the fossil's discovery, although it seems like besides the minor story, the most favored but still unproven version is that it was found sometime before 1917 by John T. Reed, an amateur engineer and archaeologist in Fisher Canyon, Nevada. Some people have erroneously identified the fossil as being imprinted onto 5 million year old coal. It's actually limestone and was reportedly dated to over 200 million years ago. One of the alleged discoverers, Alfred E. Knapp, claimed that the shoe print was made when the rock was in what he called its plastic state. The fossil's age and authenticity as a shoe print were supposedly verified by an expert named Samuel Hubbard, leading to questions about how a shoe-clad human could have possibly walked the earth so long ago. 
but these claims have never been substantiated and geologists who have examined the artifact believe that it's a natural formation and not a shoe print at all. Number 7. The Philistines Archaeologists know very little about the historically infamous Philistines, a group of people who arrived in the Levant during the 12th century BC, when many Middle Eastern and Greek societies were falling. The Levant was an area that included Israel, Gaza, Lebanon, and Syria. They left behind no texts of their own, so we mostly know about them through ancient Egyptian and Syrian texts, as well as the Hebrew Bible, which consistently described the Philistines as violent barbarians with no appreciation for art or culture. But who were these people? Ramses III fought them in battle, and the ancient Israelites also fought with them many times. The story of David and Goliath comes from a story about the giant Philistine leader Goliath and David who would go on to become king of Israel. Over the past hundred years or so, archaeologists have been looking for evidence of the Philistines to try to learn more about them. While there are a handful of artifacts that experts consider to be distinctly Philistine, they don't always agree on what qualifies as a Philistine artifact or burial. In 2016, however, archaeologists uncovered a large cemetery outside the ancient city of Ashkelon, which the Philistines controlled from the 12th century BC to the 7th century BC. It contained the remains of 211 people, which date back to the time the Philistines were present there. The discovery is the first of its kind, finally allowing us to find out more about who these mysterious people were. DNA testing on remains from different time periods suggests that the Philistines came from Crete, Greece, Sardinia, and the Iberian Peninsula, which corroborates the historical records other societies kept about them. Within centuries, the Philistine burials had a genetic signature very similar to that of the local population, indicating that they began intermarrying and having children with locals quickly after their arrival. Despite this, they appear to have remained culturally distinct. But there are still many mysteries to unravel about the Philistines, including the possibility that their origins may be more varied than the evidence has shown so far, especially since they were a migratory group and may have mixed with various local populations along their journeys. Number 6. The Mysteries of Uruk The ancient Mesopotamian city of Uruk was founded around 4500 BC. It was home to the famous King Gilgamesh and the tale of his quest for immortality. Located in the southern region of Sumer in modern-day Warqa, Iraq, it was considered one of the world's first known true cities with urbanization and state formation. It transitioned from agricultural villages to a large urban center with traders and colonists. Uruk is where the first ever writing system was developed and where the first monumental stone architecture emerged. Its residents designed the ziggurat, which were rectangular, stepped towers and probably inspired the story of the Tower of Babel. Here is also where the cylinder seal was invented that the ancient Mesopotamians used to mark their personal property and sign documents. It was the largest and most influential Mesopotamian city at a time when the region was rapidly urbanizing, acting as its primary trade and administration hub. Uruk thrived from the time it was founded until roughly 300 AD, when people began leaving. Pretty much all the excavation sites throughout Mesopotamia contain artifacts from Uruk, such as statues and bowls, which act as a testament to the ancient city's far-reaching power. One strange artifact, which was discovered at Uruk itself, is a sculpture of a priest encased inside a decorated sphere. Not much is known about this, so if you have any ideas, let me know in the comments! Despite this, questions linger among experts about what led to Uruk becoming the world's first city why it was more powerful than other, more strategically located cities, and how it exercised its local and regional authority. It seems that its rulers had a very aggressive expansionist policy, although it was sometimes subjected to foreign rulers. However, despite who was in charge, it remained a significant city for several civilizations that ruled over Mesopotamia. And now for number 5, but first, it's shout out time! Want to give a big thank you to JZG for sharing their excitement with everybody, and Colorado Coin Hunter, thank you so much! If you are new here, be sure to subscribe if you haven't already and join the Origins Explained family! Number 5. Fuente Magna You've probably heard of the Rosetta Stone, a granite stone containing inscriptions that played a major role in deciphering ancient languages. A similar stone was discovered in 1958 near Lake Titicaca in Bolivia. The large stone vessel was called the Fuente Magna Bowl and nicknamed the Rosetta Stone of the Americas. This highly controversial discovery features inscriptions in two languages, a Proto-Sumerian ancient alphabet and a local script of the ancient Pukhara. 
This artifact begs the question of whether ancient Andean people somehow interacted with the Sumerians, despite these regions being separated by thousands of miles and located on different continents. A farmer accidentally came across the object and it was taken to the city of La Paz. Bolivian archaeologist Max Portugal Zamora attempted to decipher the strange inscriptions shortly after the bull was discovered. He was unsuccessful and for the next four decades the Fuente Magna sat in storage. Then, an ancient languages expert, Dr. Clyde Ahmed Winters, identified the unknown language as a 5,000-year-old script once used in the Sahara region and deciphered the meaning of the text, which appears to be a religious dedication to a fertility goddess. But how did this bull with proto-Sumerian inscriptions end up in Bolivia? Several researchers believe that perhaps Sumerian people settled in Bolivia sometime after 2500 BC. They were known to sail the Indian subcontinent and may have entered a current that took them to the Americas. Perhaps here, while searching for food, they encountered the Pukaras, and that some chose to stay and make a new life, and the cultures intermingled. But for now, nobody knows for sure, and researchers continue to debate the topic. Hopefully, more artifacts like this will be found, and further research will help tell the story of this artifact. History is full of surprises. Number 4. Gari Wall Late last year, archaeologists in western Iran discovered the remains of a 71-mile-long ancient stone wall that was practically unheard of in the academic world. Locals, of course, had known about it for a long time, calling it the Gari Wall. The structure is poorly preserved, making it difficult to calculate its original dimensions. The researchers estimate it was 13 feet wide and 10 feet high. It was constructed from a mixture of local materials, including cobbles, boulders, and gypsum mortar, and required a great deal of labor and time to build. Along the wall, there are remnants of structures that have been destroyed. The archaeologists believe it was built between the 4th century BC and the 6th century AD based on pottery found alongside it, but they do not know who built it or why. Their best guesses so far are that the wall served as a defensive purpose or held symbolic meaning. It may have marked the border of an ancient empire. Perhaps the Parthians or the Sasanians, who were famous for building castles, organizing cities, and irrigation systems, so they would have had the power to build this enormous wall. The Gari Wall is one of several ancient walls throughout Iran, with the others being found in the northern and northeastern parts of the country. Number 3. Swiss Stonehenge Lake Constance is a 207-square-mile body of water shared between Switzerland, Germany, and Austria. In 2015, archaeologists discovered a series of bizarre man-made stones, or cairns, in the Swiss portion of the lake, 15 feet below the water's surface. They returned to the site late last year to conduct more research. The stones, which range in size up to 8.3 feet wide, are thought to be a Neolithic monument. They run parallel to the Swiss shoreline and are spaced evenly apart. Carbon dating on stones from a certain section of the formation showed that they were placed there around 5,500 years ago. At the time, the site was likely either located along the shoreline or in shallow water. The archaeologists who made the discovery claimed that the arrangement of the stones indicates that they were placed there by humans, not nature, ruling out their initial suspicion that the stones were possibly remnants that fell to the bottom of the lake from a glacier that was in the lake around 18,000 years ago. Scientists are unsure of the stone's purpose, and an international team of researchers plans to carry out further analysis on them in hopes of learning more. And while the nickname, Swiss Stonehenge, quickly took hold, experts asserted that they had nothing to do with this and were not trying to compare the underwater rocks to Stonehenge. But it is catchy. Number 2. Vikings in North America For a long time, there was only one confirmed Viking settlement in the New World, located at Lons Aux Meadows in northern Newfoundland. But archaeologists have now discovered at least three former settlements that the Vikings may have occupied. They believe that places mentioned in Viking sagas about their voyages to the New World, including Heluland, Markland, and Vinland, can be found in modern-day Baffin Island, Labrador, and elsewhere in Canada. In 2016, a team of archaeologists announced the discovery of the Point Rosé site in Newfoundland. Radiocarbon dating of artifacts at the site, including a dirt structure and a suspected hearth, placed the item sometime between the 9th and 13th centuries. Another Newfoundland site, called Sop's Arm, bears evidence of large animal traps called pitfalls, which no indigenous group of North America was known to use. This was a Viking strategy. On Baffin Island, above the Arctic Circle, researchers found possible evidence of metalworking tools and what appear to be the remains of a building. 
There are numerous other theories about potential Viking settlements, but no evidence of them has turned up yet, and the sites containing archaeological evidence have yet to be confirmed as genuine Viking encampments. Number 1. Indus Script The writing system of the Indus Valley Civilization, which flourished around 4,000 years ago in modern-day Pakistan and northwest India, is one of several ancient languages that experts have not yet deciphered. Their confusion is not for a lack of trying or for a lack of evidence, considering thousands of short inscriptions have been discovered. Most of these inscriptions contain only four or five characters, and nobody seems to agree on how to read them. In fact, experts also disagree on the underlying language behind the writing, with some even claiming that the characters are symbols with no direct connections to speech. These conflicting theories make any proposals about what the inscriptions translate to even less credible. Knowing the meaning of the language would potentially provide clarity to rival ethnic groups who claim to be ancestors of the Indus Valley civilization. Scholars invested in the matter have actually gotten many scary threats. In 2004, an anonymous donor offered a $10,000 reward to anyone who discovers an Indus text containing over 50 characters, which would make the decipherment process much easier than it is with the short samples that are currently available. The offer still stands today. Thanks for watching! Let me know your favorite in the comments below, and be sure to subscribe if you haven't already! See you next time! Bye!